Welcome you to the next session of ambient software testing unit two testing methods lecture eight in series of this unit two. Today we'll uh, go through some of the testing techniques in terms of white box, and uh, in our yesterday session we had discussed about the uh, Uh, model based testing uh, is another uh, software testing technique. So, advantages we have seen, and we took a sample uh, model as a notepad, and uh, how we can uh, generate the test cases for each of the model represented elements, and uh, then the testing. And we also understood about uh, uh, the tasks that are required for doing the MBT model based testing. And uh, we had seen some of the models in software testing. A simplistic approach uh, we have studied uh, in terms of uh, a calculator as an example. Then the flow that can have for the model calculator also we understood. And uh, the feature wise or the functionality wise uh, testing of the MBT also we listed out uh, in terms of scenarios as well as the. Uh, functionality as aggregation, application mode, display, etc. Taking in a uh, calculator as an example. Then uh, we listed out the classes that are required for the test model, like model itself, test generation, test execution, test evaluation, and the categories of those uh, classes, like in terms of test selection criteria, technology, execution options, specification. And test technology for testing the evaluation of the tests that is being carried out. And what are the options that are there for doing all these activities that are listed out under the categories that also we had seen. Okay. So okay. So today we will discuss about a white box text white box testing technique. Uh, before that, uh, I will uh, just touch base on some of the dynamic testing uh, aspects which we had a session uh, some time back. Okay, so dynamic testing <coughs> basically the testing done at real time or during the execution of the testing, ML software testing is called a dynamic testing. It is basically divided into two groups white box and black box. So, there are various uh, Techniques for black box, there are various techniques for white box. Okay, so why we need black box and white box testing techniques? Because uh, the software under test or the unit under test needs to be tested at different levels. So we need to test as a function, as a complete black box running on the field or at the real time. Or from the user perspective, that is why we use the black box approach, where the internal details will not be known. Whereas in the case of white box testing technique, we will go through the internal structure, algorithm, code, or implementation details of the software uh, under test. Then we will do the testing technique. Okay, so basically we need to have a strategy for testing. What is the purpose of testing? The goal. How to reach that goal? All this have to be laid out. Then we, once we have these details, we are going to have a test case selection methods. It means how we can pick the test cases for each of the requirements or the function. Which scenarios need to be combined together so that those scenarios can be executed in one shot. So all test cases representing inside the group also need to be done while doing the test case selection. Then uh, we are going to come up with a coverage how much uh, of the functionality requirements we have covered. So in terms of black box testing we go for the requirements coverage we in terms of or the functionality coverage or the features coverage uh, whereas in white box testing we go by the code coverage. Okay. So black box and white box testing test case selection methods black box functional or data driven basically uh, based on the requirements function specifications interfaces 
system specification as per the need that we have for the software under test or the system under test embedded system under test. <coughs> Black box test design techniques are based on the functional behavior of systems without having any explicit knowledge of the implementation or the code or the structure or the logic inside. In black box testing, the component is subjected to input and the resulting output is analyzed whether it conforms to the expected behavior. So, we have all the external input in terms of a signal, could be a discrete, analog, whatever it could be. So, all these will be driven. And we see the behavior of the system resulting in an output, and that output will be analyzed whether it is conforming to the expected behavior as per the conditions that is being specified in the specification. In the white box, or the structural testing is also called logic driven testing, it is purely based on the structure of the code or the implementation. White box test design techniques are based on the knowledge of a component's internal structure and uses all the information about how the inside of an unit works. That means we will be knowing all the details that is there as part of the embedded software. Each and every components and the units will be understood in terms of doing the test code. <coughs> This information might be a code and design of course for understanding the code it just may not be enough to go through the code. So, we need to have a design aspects as well understanding how design aspects is very important because without understanding the design we may not be able to understand the code. So, there are different types of design like high level design and low level design is most likely to be very near and mapping to the implementation or the code. So, that will be studied and understood before we do the white box testing. So, white box tests ensure that each implemented statement is run at least once and are tested against correct behavior. So, we will study about what is a statement of based testing, decision based testing, coverage and all that aspects in the today's and the next classes. So, basically white box testing will be the internal details testing in terms of statements, structure and all that. Okay, here is a diagram which gives a fair idea about how a system can be segregated. So, we have component test, integration test, system test, acceptance test as one side. Uh, as we go along uh, for the testing at a higher level we do system test and acceptance test and at the intermediate level we do the integration test and at the component or the unit level we do the unit testing. So, the one that we do at the component of the code level is nothing but white box. Of course, uh, integration test uh, can also take credit of this white box or white box testing or unit testing can take some credit of integration test where there is a challenge in terms of white box where which we cannot cover with the help of white box. So, integration test results will be considered in that case. Black box is of course purely based on the system test and partially based on the integration test also. So, so, these two are basic techniques of course, there is a one called gray box testing which combines both white box and black box techniques. So, mostly gray box testing there is an application domain not in the systems or complex systems, but it again depends on how you want to take up. So, mostly they deal with white box and black box. As I said the coverage is very important because we need to report the testing along with the results with a coverage aspect like we need to cover the functionality and we need to cover the code. So, white box testing deals with the code coverage. So, what is code coverage? Code coverage in a nutshell is as simple as 
total number of executed code divided by total number of code that is there. So we measure this in percentage. Similarly for black box testing we use the requirements coverage in terms of total number of requirements tested versus total number of requirements available. So that is the percentage it gives for coverage. Okay, so differences between black box and white box testing we will just glance through this. It is also called as input output driven testing or specification based testing. Here it is also called as a logic driven or implementation based testing. Implementation is nothing but the code. Software is viewed as a black box without bothering about the internal behavior and the structure of the program. Uh, here permits to analyze the internal behavior and the structure of the program. Software is uh, tested against its specification whereas the software is tested against low level specification or low level design with knowledge of code that means code and low level design both are used for doing the white box testing. The data is derived solely from the specification that means the inputs and the outputs are derived purely based on the specification whatever it specifies. Here test data is driven or derived from the logic of the program how the flow is there is also called as a control flow and another term they use it as a data flow. So these two are basically used here also there is a control flow but purely from spec or the requirement or the functionality here the flow is purely from the structure or the logical blocks I would say of the intended code intended system behavior whatever you would like to call. So <laughs> these aspects will be done in white box testing the control flow and the data flow whereas the control flow and the signals are used for testing the system with the help of requirements and specifications is nothing but the black box testing okay. So black box has its own advantage the black box tester has no connection to the codes we do not have to care about the code. So always he look from the perspective that code should have some issue or the bug so in that way he will test it. Test cases are designed as soon as the specifications are complete. So no need to wait for the implementation to be done. So you can go ahead with the uh, test plan, test cases, and all that based on the requirements. The implementation could be still in progress, but you can go with the test planning, test case uh, scenarios, generation, and uh, uh, whatever the high level testing is needed. So there is a need of a high uh, detailed functional knowledge of system to the tester and its behavior that means we should have a sound knowledge of the system it is very important especially doing the black box testing. Tests will be done from a end users point of view because the end user should accept the system and this is the reason sometimes this test testing technique is also called as acceptance testing that means from the user's perspective or the customer's perspective it is very important to understand uh, the whole system and accordingly the tests have to be written and tested so that the product can be released as a defect free product. And black box uh, testing helps to identify the ambiguity and contradictions in function specifications that means uh, while writing the test cases or executing it we will know there are uh, issues in terms of the system specification itself or the functional specifications because there will be some uh, requirements 
which are contradicting to the other requirements. Some requirement says this way it should be uh, triggered, whereas the logic that is uh, detailed out in other requirements may be contradicting to the primary requirements. So, all this will be uh, brought out because especially this will happen when we deal with the complex systems where the multiple teams are involved and there is some sort of understanding issue or some sort of a errors that would have been injected while writing the spec. Efficient is uh, the black box testing is very efficient especially on a larger and complex system uh, purely because uh, we approach uh, the testing technique in a larger view or the black box view and uh, it is better because uh, uh, just uh, testing the code may not be enough or it is really not enough uh, because some of the end product of issues or errors or bugs will not be or will not be found with the help of white box testing. Okay, black box testing disadvantages of testing with every possible inputs is very difficult because all signals and its uh, ranges or the values may not be able to feed. It's very difficult and it's tedious also. And uh, all test cases we may not have be possible to execute. We have seen uh, that partition equivalence and uh, boundary value analysis and all that in our previous classes. So, all we need not have to do, but we should have a nominal range in between which is enough study subjective to the availability and the applicability. So, black box testing do not care about the structure and design coverage, uh, no knowledge of code basically, but it is advantage as well as a disadvantage sometimes so some of the low level uh, uh, details like target based hardware, registers, timing, performance, etc. He may not be having a proper knowledge. So, it may be very important to understand that also for doing the black box, but white box will definitely bring out all those uh, aspects. Another problem is that uh, when uh, doing a black box system, if uh, a, an error or a fault is found, it may not be possible to isolate where the problem is. It may be anywhere uh, in the code which is difficult to while doing the black box testing. Whereas, uh, in terms of uh, white box testing, we know what statement has uh, fallen into an issue. And uh, for isolating this white box testing uh, somewhat uh, credit we may have to take or some sort of a code inspection and analysis may have to be done for uh, detecting the fault code. Reasons for intermittent failures of the code cannot be found. That means sometimes a failure comes, sometimes the failure may not come while doing the testing is very challenging uh, testing aspect. Uh, it is called uh, point to point testing, in just very, very nice whether user required functionality is implemented exactly or not. So, uh, while doing that, uh, intermittent failure could be there. It is very difficult to isolate due to what uh, that failures are coming. Uh, though, on a nutshell, uh, while doing testing. At black box level, it appears to be a simple failure, but that failure should be able to reproduce. This is one important term that is being used. Reproducibility. That means we should be able to reproduce the issues that we found during the black box system. So. That reproducibility is very important aspect, and uh, all the cases mostly should be reproducible. But uh, one or two cases, or few cases, it may be difficult. Those are called intermittent uh, failures. So those things are a bit uh, challenging, but with the help of white box, we may overcome those problems. Some of the errors may not be able to discover until white box testing is done. So, we know that there are issues, but until we complete the white box, we will not be able to discover it. And uh, test environment is very important, and uh, we have a heavy dependency on that. 
and the system should be stable. Then only the black box testing can be done effectively because the black box testing as a whole it is done on the entire system and the entire system should be running under all the conditions that is intended and uh, those conditions are having a dependency for carrying out the tests and it should be stable and uh, running all the time <coughs> then only we can uh, conduct the black box test. Okay, white box uh, testing advantages. As the knowledge of internal coding structure is very uh, easy, it becomes very easy to find out what type of uh, input data can be uh, used in testing the application effectively, where the problems are, and each statement or lines of uh, executable, the tester will have a knowledge. So, with the help of that, he should be able to uh, churn out uh, where the problem is. Helps in removing the unwanted length of code, which can bring in hidden defects. That means there are certain uh, lines of code which can be optimized or it can be removed as a defect uh, because it will be hidden inside and uh, we can improve the implementation with the help of white box testing. Helps in determining the fault code uh, segments. That means, uh, as I said, the lines of code when we do a statement uh, with the white box system, uh, if the user has implemented wrong, suppose instead of equal to, if he has used double equal to, the meaning is entirely different. Whereas the first one is for assignment, the second one is for comparison. So, the purpose of that line varies and uh, fault is already existing. <coughs> that is how white box testing. Uh, Will bring out all this faulty code which is implemented. <coughs> Discrepancies between the code and the requirements can be identified accurately. That means, uh, white box tester will have a knowledge of requirements also, and uh, while uh, going through the code and uh, testing it, he will have a in the back of his mind the requirements and uh, with the Back of his mind, having requirements, he can definitely know where the problems are and discrepancies he can find out easily with the help of a code and the requirements understanding with an accurately with an accuracy. And no much system dependency unless there are signals that are derived from the external system. That means he doesn't have to care about the external signals. Uh, suppose uh, some unit he is trying to test, there are few parameters which are derived from the external system, he do not have to trigger the external system, rather he can feed the values for example, what are the expected uh, values that signals are supposed to take. So, those are some of the white box testing advantages and uh, we go through the white box testing disadvantages as knowledge of code and internal structure is a prerequisite. A skilled tester is needed to carry out this type of testing, which increases the cost in general. That means we cannot afford to have a shufflement of the team again and again. Uh, person uh, should have a thorough understanding of the code, he should have a good knowledge of the code as well. So, so that is the prerequisite, and uh, a skilled tester only can do this, uh, where he has a knowledge of the underneath the language and uh, the underneath the compiler or the target where the code is being used along with the system as well, but more emphasis is on the internal structure and the logic or the code. And uh, it is time consuming as to test all the aspects of the code, that means if there is a 1 lakh lines of code is there, all the lines of the code need to be tested. So, it is a bit time consuming as well as the uh, Lot of effort required and the cost is required in terms of ramping up the ramping up the team and putting the right effort, right schedule, and all that. Covering structure of code and its implementation as preset standards. At time, there is a need of system knowledge for the internal details of the implementation, especially the tolerances, states, etc. That means it is not enough to have just a the internal structure and the code knowledge, you should have a knowledge of the external signals, 
and the system and the states at which the system behaves and the transitions all these details you need to have ok. So, that is the background of uh, white box and black box system and uh, we focus on white box because black box testing we have covered like partition equivalence, uh, coverage analysis, nominal range and all that ok. Now, we will uh, touch base on the coverage testing. Okay, so having understood black box and white box testing, we will uh, go through white box uh, testing uh, technique, uh, the internal structure, logic, and all the aspects of the testing. We will uh, go through. So the basic idea of white box testing is to test all the internal structure and the logic and the implementation that is there in the system. So there are different. Uh, types of testing available, uh, let us try to understand that ok, coverage testing. The weakness of uh, functional testing that is the black box testing is that it rarely exercise all the code, coverage tests attempt to avoid this weakness by ensuring that each code statement decision point or decision path is exercised at least once. Coverage testing also can show how much of your data space has been accessed. That means, we have a flow logic and decisions uh, the logics having decisions on the uh, controls. So, all this uh, may not have been exercised in uh, black box testing or the functional testing. So, how do we do? So, with the help of code we will do that white box testing, all the aspects of that uh, code that is there in the statement and the decision points like if else, while do, cases all those will be tested, the decision points and the condition points and the decision paths all this will be found in coverage testing uh, that the decision logic can have uh, basically derived from the flow charts such as uh, if else while do processing processing we have then case I am taking example it does not matter which language we are using C, ADA, C++ whatever it is we come across all these uh, decision points, statements and uh, logics right. So, these blocks will be basically exercise to make sure that all these blocks are covered and the statements underneath these blocks or covering all this will be exercised. So, that is where we have a weakness in the black box testing or the functional testing because we test the whole function not addressing every path that is underneath that. Also known as white box tests or glass box tests, some people will say glass box tests, but we call it as white box test. Coverage tests are devised with full knowledge of how the software is implemented, that means we should have a full knowledge in the control of the code that is with the permission to look inside the box, it means purely it is internal structure of the software. It is also called structural coverage, it is very important term where the complete structure of the implemented code is exercised to make sure that there are no defects. So, that is why it is called as coverage testing and white box testing 
white box has depend on specific implementation decisions they cannot be designed until after the code is written it means testing the design technique we need to have after the code is implemented. So, those are some of the power testing aspects that need to be done in white box test <coughs> ok. So, what are the broad level coverage testing elements that are there as I said three types of coverage we do in terms of coverage testing they are statement coverage where test cases selected because they execute every statement in the program at least once minimum one time the statement have to be covered. So, that is where we use statement coverage and other broad level categories decision or branch coverage this test cases tests the every branch that means we have a decision right like if else. So, if else can have true path as well as false path. So, both have to be exercised and that false path can have again some more decisions for example, let me see if I can draw ok. There is a decision box. And suppose a uh, statement is there, uh, compare something, compare a signal against its uh, range, suppose a temperature. So, we will do the decision taking care here whether it is signal is true or false, or signal less than some value. If it is true, this path will be there. If it is false, some more statements are exercised. It could be another decision box further down the line. Again, we will have to exercise leading to multiple paths. It could be another true, another false. So, basically, we need to exercise this, this, this one path, this, this. This, 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 this again, likewise it will go, the flow will go. So, all this because there are number of statements for true, number of statements implemented for false, and again we have a decision underneath that. That decision also will lead to couple of paths in terms of true and false. So, all this have to be executed at least once while doing the statements coverage. That means we do the statement coverage each of the statements along with that we are covering the decision or branch coverage. <coughs> Another one is conditional coverage, what we do here is test cases chosen to force each condition in addition to take on all possible logic number. Suppose this, this is instead of for this less than 30 one more condition also is there suppose signal less than 30 and greater than 20. So, there are number of cases which we can derive. So, that could take another path instead of true false do this statement one here statement two statement three likewise we may have uh, different uh, conditions that is existing uh, instead of a decision and branch all these have to be excised and all the logic values that needs to be taken care of like less than 30 greater than 20 greater than 30 uh, less than 20 like we have seen boundary uh, how we do for black box testing 
same way is applicable for here also where all possible logic values are taken so this is another type of coverage we have so basically three broad categories white box as statement decision condition and to achieve statement coverage every executable statement in the program is inward at least once during the software testing achieving statement coverage assures that all code statements are reachable uh, this is especially very important because uh, there are standards like view on sanity uh, that mandates this that means 100% coverage is mandatory statement coverage 100% is uh, very much required maybe i'll uh, uh brief uh, one of the session about devons and which is an aerospace uh, standard and the process statement coverage of course there are uh, different safety levels like a b c d e so the safety levels are there in devons and based on the level of safety the decision is taken at uh, to see what sort of a coverage we need to have for testing white box testing especially that is how uh, one of the standards say similarly we have apsar and other that are used in now automotive so basically to cover the statements that are getting executed okay so white box testing uh, in other words what are the types of uh, white box testing that we have so we have statements testing where all the statements uh, are to be executed and uh, we have a branch decision testing where each decision path and branch path that are need to be tested and we have a data flow testing where uh, the data that flows within the embed system need to be tested uh, in terms of all possible values and the branch condition testing where uh, the branch leading to different conditions need to be tested then uh, we have branch condition combination testing i will uh, put the different slides and uh, we will uh, detail about all this in a separate uh, session and we have a, another one called modified condition testing it's also called as mcdc where there is a truth table they write it for all the possible conditions sometimes we may not be able to test all of them but uh, it is again subjective to the level of safety and the level of justification based on that we may have to do the last one is a linear code sequence and jump testing this is another technique that is being used so we have seen black box white box testing in terms of white box testing uh, different methods uh statement testing branch decision testing data flow branch condition branch condition combination modified condition and we'll see the cag having said this we will take the first one as a statement coverage so what is the statement coverage the testing we do okay uh the idea with the statement coverage is to create enough test cases so that every statement in the source code has been executed at least once that means execute every statement in the code uh, at least once during the test case execution while we do the test case execution all the statements in that module or the unit has to be executed or it should touch that uh, whatever the test path that it is going to execute requires uh, use of uh, tools because manually it may be difficult 
to do it there are a lot of tools with the help of that we can do this uh, <coughs> uh, statement coverage uh, testing uh, the tools uh, i will list out the tools uh, specify that uh, what those tools are used in the industry such as ldra vector cast rtrt etc basically what they do is they now test hooks added to the existing software that uh, mechanism is called instrumentation instrumentation skews performance that means instrumentation of the existing software in such a way that all the statements should be executed at least once so with the help of that tool we will be able to do the workflow when using the statement to cover these two first to execute all existing black box test cases that means the basic normal law uh, in terms of the functionality test cases uh, that are created while uh, monitoring the execution uh, this monitoring is no, is all uh, but the simplest uh, test cases performed with tool support that means a normal uh, test behavior uh, with the basic flow of the functionality will be tested when all the black box test cases have been executed don't get confused with the black box and all that what i'm trying to say is in normal cases where we exercise the functionality of the particular module or the unit that will be exercised first so the tool same tool will be used we are uh, being used for white box to generate the test and execute it so the tool will report uh, which parts of the code uh, that are not tested so then we are going to add those additional uh, untested area in terms of the lines of code so the idea is now to construct a new test cases that will cover as many of the remaining statements as much possible so start uh, with the part of the code that should be reached walk backward in the code to determine the values of the input variables required to reach the desired part of the code with the specified values of input variables check the specification for expected report and execute the new test case while monitoring it that means uh, we may have to do back and forth in terms of reaching the code so how we can reach the code may we could with the help of the inputs that are required so the inputs to reach all the code will be through uh, the data driven within the code that uh, data driven aspects could be a parameter because we use a function which has parameters so these parameters should be triggered such a way that all the statements with the possible uh, flow of the executable statements which are not reached with a normal uh, functionality will be covered so that is why we use uh, statement coverage and the expected result uh, how to expect is basically there are uh, uh, functionality wise uh, requirements for that module what it is supposed to execute and what is the output of that so based on that we will uh, set the expectation and the expected results those expected results will be monitored while doing the statement execution with the help of for uh, this instrumentation the instrumentation is done by the tool uh, for the white box but the white box the tool we need to configure it or uh, modify in such a way that all these aspects in terms of uh, normal functionality as well as uh, complete statement coverage needs to be done one problem that i have seen is uh, <coughs> the expected result should not be from the code that means we should not see the code in terms of expected result we should see the functionality of the code that is being executed So that should be taken or considered as an expected result while exercising that. Basically, of course, if it is a individual statement having a local localization aspects, then we can use the 
code itself as expected result but most of the case we may not be able to achieve because uh, the code is uh, supposed to deliver the required output based on the functionality and uh, uh, you see or dig more into the code the tester may get biased so first he needs to understand the system with the help of a specification then that specification he should match with the connected modules that are underneath each of the functionality and that each functionality he should try to drive the different inputs and each functionality he needs to provide a expected result of the behavior in terms of its functionality. So that is how we will be doing the statement testing and statement testing is done with the help of instrumentation and the instrumentation is mostly done with the help of tools and the coverage how we are going to achieve is statement coverage how much we have touched that means how much we are able to execute the statements and against that total number of statements this will be in percentage. So we are supposed to have a hundred percent sometimes it may not be able possible to reach a hundred percent so it could be 90 or 95 percentage etc. So whatever that 5 percent leading to not covered statement so we may have to do additional testing so additional testing could be with the help of code inspection or analysis whatever it is so those will be used for achieving the 100 percent sometimes say some statement in the code may lead to an interrupt and that the interrupt may not be able to achieve with the help of instrumentation or some register checking or register operations those things may not be able to do with the help of a tool or offhand with the model itself there is a dependency on other things those aspects may not be able to cover those aspects we should be able to do with the help of a debugger analysis or inspection what are the possible alternates that we have for the statement test. <coughs> So that is about our statement coverage probably I will try to explain with an example of C code or in the next class and there are other white box testing technique and there is a C code you see here example code we will try to see that. Now there is a while statement, there is a if statement. So, all these inputs need to be triggered for statement coverage so that all the statements are executed. Suppose if the count takes less than iterations and iterations is here how much 750. So, we should be able to execute all possible 750. This will not be done manually, but with the help of a tool, it will be done. <coughs> Okay, now coming to statement coverage testing or the coverage testing, we use the term called instrumentation or the software instrumentation. So, what is instrumentation means? So, software only measurement methods are all based on some form of execution logging, it means. Uh, we measure the software in terms of execution only how much software is executed is what we measure in terms of software testing. The implication is that after the block is entered every statement in the block is executed. So by placing a simple trace statement such as a printf at the beginning of every basic block you can track the block and by implication all the statements in the block are executed. That means uh, we have suppose uh, 10 statements in a block or a functionality or a module function this suppose has a statement 1 or the semicolon you know semicolon is a executable terminator okay. so three statements are there. How do we know that each statement is 
executed. So we can put a trace. The trace could be anything, but the tool uses a different uh, tracing mechanism. As a simplistic approach, we can use a printer. So that by seeing the report, if I have a three printers printing some values for each of these statements, I know that three statements have been executed. So that is so the funda about uh, uh, the implication of uh, each of these statements in this functionality of the block. And uh, if the functionality has, uh, has several hundreds of thousands of lines, it is not practical to have inserted the printer by ourselves. That is why I told this process is called instrumentation. This instrumentation is done with the help of a, a tool. Uh, there are a lot of tools which does all these traces. If the application code is running under the ATOS, uh, the ATOS might supply a low instruction logging service. So sometimes ATOS itself will provide for a trace in terms of the statements. So if that is there, then a trace code can tell ATOS at the entry point of each basic block. The ATOS can log the call in the memory buffer in the target system or report it to the host. That means ATOS will have a functionality to see what are the statements that can be traced or not traced, etc. To feature or the uh, <coughs> uh, functionality is available within the ATOS that can be used for tracing out all the statements within the block. But mostly uh, non ATOS embedded systems they use instrumentation aspects with the help of a tool. And even less instructive uh, intrusive form of execution logging might be called low instruction low intrusion printer. A simple memory write is used in place of printf. It need not be printf, printf basically depending on the IO that if we have it will print the value or we can use a memory write where we will write into some sort of a memory and that memory can be dumped to analyze or instead of a memory we can take a a report in terms of printing it into a RS232 or any output that is connected so that the less intrusive form of execution can be taken care. At each basic block entry point the login function marks a unique spot in the in excess data memory. After the tests are complete external software correlates these marks to the appropriate sections of the code. Alternatively the same kind of login all can write to a single memory cell and a logic analyzer. We will speak about logic analyzer in the session. I will tell what it is. Uh, there is a hardware interface as I said RS232 or CAN or any of the interfaces we can use it for logging the traces for covering all the statements. If upon entry to the basic block and the logging writes the current value of the program compound to a fixed location memory. Then the analyzer set to trigger only on a write to that address can capture the address of every login that is executed. After the test suit is completed, the logic analyzer trace buffer can be uploaded to the host computer for analysis. This is what I told. The logic analyzer sort of a tool is used to check the traces and log the execution. So this method or the process is called software instrumentation. If the system being tested is a ROM based and the ROM capacity is close to the limit the instrumented code image might not fit. So this is an interesting thing I will explain. If the embedded software fits to the flash or the memory in the target base right. So what will happen is sometimes after the instrumentation code that the size may exceed. So what we can do is we will reduce the functionality and test only the pieces of the blocks and we will do multiple iterations to cover it. So what we can do is we can improve your smoking coverage by using two more rigorous coverage techniques, decision coverage and modified condition coverage as a next technique basically. Okay. So there are other aspects of uh, testing, gray box testing and uh, coverage testing tools and all that. We will see that in the next session. We will go through some of the words that we have used. Uh, 
Additionally, I think uh, after MBT, we have a coverage statement, lines of code, instrumentation, etc. So, this need to be studied. Of course, we will have uh, some of the glossary initial state, system state in which the first event is accepted, input, input domain, input value, inspection. Uh, inspection we will study in the next week of session. A group of review quality improvement process for data material. So, we will be inspection of the existing thing, it is a process. Integration we know combining different components into larger assembly to be hardware software or software software. The integration strategy will work out addition about how the different combinations can be integrated. Integration testing is performing the integration. Iterative development and iterative life cycle based on safety involvement of and refinement of a system through multiple development uh, cycles of analysis, design, implementation, and testing. So, we have seen in the life cycles, V model is used. Similarly, iterative development is also another life cycle model that is being used. Known errors that means defects that have been found but not solved, that means we already know the problem. With the understanding that this known with the known defects, we will go ahead with the other known other unknown issues. Life cycle, life cycle structure the process by dividing it into multiple phases. Little we have seen it is a TM method where the four cornerstones of our structure testing is used. Little means life cycle, infrastructure, techniques, and organization. So that is about uh, the class. Uh, lecture 18 uh, as on date. We will continue the white box testing in the next class.